Yellowstone National Park, established in 1872, holds a special place in the hearts of nature enthusiasts, scientists, and adventure seekers. Located primarily in Wyoming, but also extending into parts of Montana and Idaho, this iconic park is not only the first national park in the United States, but also the first national park in the world. Covering an expansive area of over 2.2 million acres, Yellowstone boasts a diverse range of ecosystems, breathtaking landscapes, and unique geothermal features, making it a true gem of natural beauty and wonder. One of the park's most notable attractions is its geothermal activity. Yellowstone is home to more than 10,000 hydrothermal features, including geysers, hot springs, mud pots, and fumaroles. Among these, the famous Old Faithful Geyser draws visitors from around the world with its regular and impressive eruptions. Witnessing the raw power of nature as boiling water shoots high into the air is a sight to behold. However, every so often park officials make unexpected discoveries. Yellowstone Park Rangers announced that back in November 2022, a probe was being conducted following a discovery made by a Yellowstone staff member who revealed that they found a foot floating in a hot spring within the National Park. The West Thumb Geyser Basin and its parking lot were temporarily closed following the discovery at Abyss Pool, located in the southern region of Yellowstone. The officials don't suspect any foul play in the person's passing, as per their statement, but are looking into the matter. However, no further information or identification details about the deceased are provided in the statement. Morgan Warthin, a park representative, reported that no additional details were available regarding the incident at the park. According to park officials, the Abyss Pool can be found on the south side of the Southern Loop through Yellowstone National Park, west of the West Thumb of Yellowstone Lake. This pool has an impressive depth of 53 feet or 16 meters and a temperature of approximately 140 degrees. According to the website of the park, in hot springs, when superheated water rises to the surface, it is cooled and sinks down, while being replaced by even hotter water from below, which creates a continuous circulation. This circulation prevents the water from reaching the temperature required to form a geyser. Yellowstone National Park's hot springs are widely popular, but equally hazardous, especially for uninformed visitors. They have reportedly harmed or claimed numerous human lives, more than any other natural feature in the park. According to the website, park officials have recorded 22 passings connected to hot spring injuries since 1890. Experts recommend that individuals remain on designated pathways and walkways when traversing thermal zones, as these areas are characterized by pools and springs covered by a precarious, fragile layer that hides the extremely hot and occasionally acidic water underneath. In 2016, an Oregon man lost his life after falling into a bubbling, acidic spring and dissolving. Although there were no major remains discovered, this tragic incident highlights the dangerous nature of such occurrences. In recent years, the park has experienced an increase in popularity, with an annual influx of 4 million visitors. However, during June of last year, the park had to close down completely due to severe flooding. National Park Disappearances have captivated the public's imagination for decades, raising questions about the mysteries that lie within the vast wilderness areas of our national parks. These cases involve individuals who have vanished under puzzling circumstances, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions and speculation. While many disappearances can be explained by natural causes, human factors, or accidents, there remain a number of cases that defy conventional explanations, fueling intrigue and giving rise to a variety of theories. The phenomenon of national park disappearances is not unique to any one location, but has been reported across different parks throughout the world. In the United States, cases such as the disappearance of Dennis Martin in Great Smoky Mountains National Park and the vanishing of Stacy Arras in Glacier National Park have garnered significant attention. These cases, along with many others, share common characteristics, including sudden disappearances lack of conclusive evidence, and perplexing circumstances. One factor contributing to the mystique surrounding national park disappearances is the sheer vastness and ruggedness of these wilderness areas. National parks encompass thousands of square miles of diverse terrains, from dense forests to steep mountains and deep canyons. Navigating these environments can be challenging, 
even for experienced hikers and explorers. The wilderness offers plenty of hiding places and difficult to reach areas, making search and rescue efforts complex and time consuming. Additionally, national parks attract millions of visitors each year, providing ample opportunities for individuals to become separated from their groups or to venture off the designated trails. In unfamiliar surroundings, even a momentary lapse in attention or a wrong turn can lead to dire consequences. Add to that the unpredictability of weather patterns and the potential for rapidly changing conditions, and it becomes clear how people can find themselves in precarious situations. The involvement of wildlife has also been proposed as a potential factor in some disappearances. National parks are home to a wide range of wildlife, including bears, mountain lions, and other large predators. While animal attacks are relatively rare, they can occur, especially when humans encroach upon or unintentionally provoke these creatures. Such encounters can result in disappearances, with remains scattered or consumed, making investigations more challenging. New type of fallout from Fukushima found a decade after nuclear disaster. After a decade, new highly radioactive particles have been identified from the fallout of the Fukushima nuclear disaster. An international group of researchers have characterized the particles by making nuclear forensic methods, which gives us more information on the impact of the accident while helping to inform cleanup and decommissioning efforts. This incident resulted in a series of nuclear meltdowns and hydrogen explosions that released a large number of radioactive materials into the neighboring environment, including microparticles rich in radioactive cesium that got as far as Tokyo, which is 225 kilometers away. Recent studies have shown that the fallout from the reactor also consisted of larger cesium-bearing particles, each of them greater than 300 microns in diameter, which has higher levels of activity Per particle. These particles were found to have been situated in a narrow zone stretching from around 8 kilometers northwest from the reactor site. Dr. Satoshi Osonomiya, a chemist and environmental scientist of Japan's Kyushu University, analyzed 31 of these particles, which were collected from the surface soil taken from roadsides in radiation hotspots, saying the following, we discovered a new type of radioactive particle 3.9 kilometers northwest of the Fukushima nuclear power plant, which has the highest cesium-134 and 137 activity yet documented in Fukushima. Along with the record-breaking radioactivity seen in two of the particles, the group also discovered that they had characteristic compositions and textures that differed from those previously seen in the fallout of the reactor unit 1. One of the researchers said the following, Owing to their large size, the health effects of the new particles are likely limited to external radiation hazards during static contact with the skin. When will it be safe to live in Chernobyl again? As far as when things will be back to normal in Chernobyl, that is still a question that is relatively still up in the air. It is estimated that the area and neighbouring regions will still be in cleanup efforts for many decades to come. Scientists have even gone to the extent of predicting that the region and neighbouring regions deemed as exclusion zones will not be safe to inhabit for a bold and hefty 20,000 years. However, with that said, it is not to say that people are not currently inhabiting those regions. In fact, some have returned to their old family homes to nostalgically resume the farm life they once lived as children and adolescents before the catastrophe at Chernobyl. That primarily applies to the elderly. However, families who are fleeing crises or conflicting situations have also been attracted to the area due to the highly affordable land. Some homes and land can be purchased at what amounts to be a meager price of a few hundred American dollars. The price tag can be exceptionally tempting, especially for those escaping some sort of conflict. However, considering the nature of the area that is still contaminated from Chernobyl, it holds the potential of a not-so-pretty price for your health. As far as living conditions go, there is access to electricity, gas and phone lines. For water and sewage, the area lacks any running and functional systems intact. As mentioned before, the groundwater has been designated as unsafe to drink, as it is still heavily contaminated. However, there are wells present, but there still exists a risk factor. 
All water must be boiled first, especially in the case of drinking water, to aid in minimizing potential risks. As far as maintaining a livelihood with work, there are no working opportunities considering the nature of the area and how they are still considered exclusion zones. Although it is possible to grow crops and raise animals and the like, as mentioned prior, it is not without risk as the soil is still contaminated so it puts the produce that is hence produced from the crops in question as to whether they are truly safe to consume. Although several diligent efforts have been made and are still in the making to reinstate a sense of order, the area and neighbouring regions unfortunately have several years more ahead, maybe even thousands before normalcy will truly be achieved due to the gravity of the impacts from the events that transpired on that fateful day. Although the current circumstances still remain grim, as with anything in life, it does well to view through lenses of hope for a better and brighter future ahead for lessons learned. New form of DNA discovered inside living human cells Investigating precisely what goes into making us human, making us largely the same but with such vast differences, is a complex ongoing research battle. Understanding how DNA works is an incredibly advanced feat to try and accomplish. This complex matter is the underlying code to making us human, tying us to our ancestors and making us who we are. Scientists have been studying DNA for decades, over a century even, and we have even grown to know it in its distinctive double helix form, where two strands are twisted around one another. This is how it appears in living cells, and how you were taught about DNA in school, though this is not the only way for DNA to present itself. Away from the human body, tucked away in labs and test tubes, scientists have observed other forms of DNA, shifting shape not to the characteristic double helix, but instead forming stranger, more interesting and unique shapes. These more intriguing shapes and DNA structures are confined to the labs, or so we thought. In 2021, a research team led by Imperial College London observed a four-stranded DNA shape, named the G-quadruplex, forming independently from our external interference within human cells. The team has created probes designed to look at how the G-quadruplexes interact with the other molecules within these living cells. While we cannot be certain, it has been speculated that G-quadruplexes have some sort of role in cancer development, as more of these G-quadruplexes are found in smaller areas in the cancer cells. Since there is some sort of correlation between the concentration of G-quadruplexes and the presence of cancer, some have suggested a tie between the two. The aim of the probes, set out by the Imperial College London team, is that they will show us how G-quadruplexes can be dismantled by particular proteins. Between this and the possibility of helping us to discover what other molecules can bind to these unusual DNA forms, we may be able to develop drugs to target these specific DNA strands, interfering with their activities. If this is successful, then these probes have a huge potential to have a profound impact upon cancer treatments. Ben Lewis from the Department of Chemistry at Imperial College London and one of the study's lead authors explained that there are different DNA shapes all of which have a significant variation in their impact upon the processes that involve the DNA. This can include reading, copying or expressing genetic information. He continued, adding that there is an increasing amount of evidence suggesting that the G-quadruplexes have a key role in several processes crucial to maintaining life. The missing piece of the jigsaw in understanding a number of diseases and illnesses has been being able to place this out of the ordinary DNA structure into living cells. We have found instances where this structure is present in cells. These G-quadruplexes are still rare to be seen inside living cells, so the techniques, methods and equipment that we use to detect these is not the most accurate or advanced by any means. Instead of being tailored and designed to look for these very specific molecules, the equipment is far more standard than that, detecting molecules, though not these exact ones. Lewis said that this was like finding a needle in a haystack, but the needle is also made of hay. Further researchers associated with the Medical Research Council's London Institute of Medical Sciences has taken this research another step further, using a chemical probe named Dauter M2 
which will light up when the G-quadruplex is present, regardless as to the quantity or concentration. The team were then able to time how long the bright fluorescence lasts. This gives us a more sophisticated angle to this research, eliminating some of the more unreliable techniques that have been used to conduct similar research in the past. The next step was to introduce them to helicase proteins. These are molecules that would unwind these confusing DNA structures, letting us look right into the live cells directly. The team also looked into how molecules and the G-quadruplexes interact, seeing how and which molecules bind themselves to these DNA structures. When we have this sort of understanding, researchers can then investigate the nucleus of these living cells and gain a better understanding of these phenomena that we would not be able to observe otherwise. The biggest hope to come from this research is an understanding in how to develop drugs to tackle these specific DNA structures, helping to fight awful diseases like cancer. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.